In this video, the Pittsburgh Penguins sent me a bunch of broken sticks and stuff, and I'm gonna build something with it. So growing up in Pittsburgh, I've pretty much been a hockey fan my entire life, and we've been fortunate to watch not one, not two, not three, not four, but five Stanley Cup wins come through the city of Pittsburgh. It's NHL playoff season right now, and what a better time to try a viral epoxy trend. There's an account on Instagram called Backyard Resin, and they did this uh, really cool looking like ice rink in a river table idea, and myself and the rest of the team just thought it was cool as hell. So we're gonna try it. I don't know how this thing is gonna turn out, but I do wanna give it away to one of you guys. So you gotta be subscribed, stick around till the end of the video. I'll tell you how to enter to win. I got a box built already for the mold. Let's get the build. So I got these oak slabs. I like the movement on the edges that I think will work well for this project. And then I'll have these out of my hair. So I like how much curves going on in this song, bitch. So I'm gonna cut it slightly oversized. Jordan, hold on that side. That side? Mm -hmm. We literally have a trimming blade on here. Why do we have this blade on here? Now I'm gonna cut the sucker in half and see how awful it looks. Ooh, that's a potato chip. This should get interesting. I like the movement, but I don't love that there's not a ton of space in there. So I'm gonna cut a few inches off this side, widen our gap a little bit, which should show a little bit more of our river. This little niblet here is sticking out a little bit too far. And because I'm gonna torch this sucker anyway, I'm just gonna bring it back in because I want a little bit more to be open in the table itself in the center there. It'd be a much more awesome river if I wasn't trying to put an ice rink inside of it. But I think for the sake of what we're trying to do here, this will do. Still got some cool movement. I like it. We'll have the center logo in this area. Blue line. Probably get like a full rink in the back. Full rink-a-dink. I think it's pretty cool, which means we need to light these on fire. Yes. I think this will do. Friends, we are in the pour room. If you remember our tour video, we said we were gonna turn this into a pour room. It's a work in progress, but we're doing tabletop epoxy on this stuff and it's gonna get all over the place. Plus we're making dust in the rest of the shop. So we got tabletop epoxy. What I'm going for here is I don't want the charredness of these planks here to get all over the inside of our mold or the inside of the hockey rink that we're gonna be pouring. If I was to just do a deep pour on top of this, there'd be potential for things to flake off and float around. So we're gonna submerge this in tabletop epoxy first and then put it into the table, which should prevent that in theory. As much as I love epoxy, I hate tabletop epoxy. <laughs> I don't have a good track record with it, but this is a pretty straightforward project. One to one ratio, we're gonna mix up about 32 ounces and then what some might call a spray and pray. Yum. This is probably way too much. And again, I always feel like when we do tabletop, it's too much. I want it to stay just super clean, so I'm gonna try to avoid touching it the best I can. But we, will, we will find out. Watch your boots. Now, if you're smart, which ends no, we are not, this will self-level and uh, you can move it around pretty easily. And I've seen this technique a few times. You can see it's already dripping over here. So I'm gonna work and I'm just working the epoxy. I'm not pushing my hand the whole way down because I don't want to smear the soot <laughs> that is our stuff around. But I've been seeing a lot of guys that do tabletop do it this way with their hand instead of squeegee. Now in a perfect world, I would have had this resin a little bit warmer because it's not moving as much as I'd like, but not the end of the world. Now we got to make sure we get the live edge, which I'm going to use a brush for and just kind of brush it on. So now we more or less just baby this sucker as it releases air and bubbles keep popping and keep coming back in, checking it every 20 or 30 minutes or so. And I think I want to get the ice rink poured next. Yes, that's what we're going to do. So because we left this to sit overnight, you get these little nibs on the bottom here. If you ever sit down at a bar somewhere and they've got an epoxy top, feel if they left these on there. Because most of the time they do and it drives me up a wall because it's the easiest thing to fix. We could satisfyingly pop them off. Well, maybe we will do that. I'll get a chisel and you can watch them come off, but sander works just as easy.
A lot of people were commenting on my Instagram that they uh, don't know who I am without my fake glasses on. So anyway, this is like a sticky carpet film that if you're working indoors and on a construction site or something that has carpet, you lay this stuff down so you don't ruin the floor. We a lot of the times use Tyvek tape for the inside of our molds in order to uh, alleviate where the epoxy is gonna land and so it doesn't heat up too much and melt the melamine. So we're gonna try this. It'll work, but it'll be a matter of how well does it work? And this is a lot more affordable than Tyvek. Also, it comes a lot wider. So, something like that. Can you go get me the tabletop epoxy? Sweet. And I think for this first pour, that's pretty much all the prep work we're gonna do. These aren't perfectly flat, but because we're pouring clear over the entire table, not just the center, I don't really care. I just need them to hold down. So I'm gonna clamp them down, we'll mix some resin. I hate the lighting in that other room. So, we're gonna pour in here. We're gonna do more countertop epoxy. The bottom is just gonna be a thin layer, uh, and this stuff only takes a day to dry. So I'm gonna go with some white pigment and about 32 ounces of, of resin, and that should cover the bottom for what we need. This hopefully doesn't backfire on me, not doing it in the literal room that we made for pouring. In the arms of the angels. Sam is calling it the Emporium. Just wanna make the base coat nice and white, a couple drops of white, and then I'm gonna use a stirring stick because it's a good amount of epoxy. So, twofold here. One, Sam claims that their reason ice is cloudy is because of air. And yes, that's part of the equation to my understanding. I also think it has something to do with impurities, but if you're a whiskey snob or an ice person, please let us know, because we may go down this rabbit hole and test it, and we may do it in this video. We don't even know. But we're gonna pour our base layer of ice for this table here and then just let this flatten out. Keep an eye on it. One thing important here, I don't want it getting up on the edges of the table. So just straight down the middle, shall we? It's so not satisfying just because the damn melamine's white. <laughs> Wait, do we know what we're doing? Absolutely not. I just hope it's white enough the next day. So the base layer, even though you can't tell, is dry. Now, Sam went ahead and printed some decals on the Cricut, because we're Cricut people now. And that thing's actually awesome. So we've got a bunch of the parts that we're gonna put into the table, which we need to start laying out. And what I'm gonna do is just put that sucker down. This is one of those projects that's, in my opinion, an artistic interpretation. Here we go, Ooh, baby. Hot damn, it looks like an ice cream. Yeah, so now, I think I wanna go with the bigger side over here. This is home ice. Real pros would have done everything to scale, but as most of you know, we only play pros on the YouTube. It kind of looks close to a rink of the hockeys. All right, who'd have thunk? The sticking the stickers on has become the hardest thing we're doing on this so far. And if we were a little bit more mathematically inclined, we could have probably made this thing to scale. Thinking back on it, Sam, we probably should have taken a photo, placed everything on the photo. Booyah! Freaking cool! I like this idea, putting stuff in rivers. All right, so Sam got our circales, which I think is Spanish for circles. It's not. Sam went ahead and fixed a little hiccup with uh, the red line. Because on a real hockey rink, it would go, but it split the logo. Well, we don't like that look. We want it to be more kind of video game-ish. That is crispy. <laughs> that was awesome. I'm terrified now because we're gonna pour a thin layer of white on top of it. The paint is typically underneath. The ice brings the sheen down. It just looks a little different. And then this looks like an air hockey table to me. And I like air hockey, but not enough. So we're gonna try a little translucent white on top, which should give us the effect we're looking for. And if you're curious on what I'm talking about, it will pop up a photo for you right here. Perfect, all right. It's got some diamond effect in it too, so we get a little glossy glossy. All right, so we're just going little by little. You can see I got a bloop. I'm just gonna Spread this. <laughs> yeah. 
I think we got a package for the pens. I got a buddy that works in the equi equipment room for the pens sent us some pretty sick stuff. We've got broken sticks. This is one of Jari's broken sticks, which is super cool. He's the pens goalie, all-star goalie, I believe, right? Right, Jordan? Yep. We've got a full stick here. Ah, cracked on the heel. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. Bunch of sticks. So we got Matheson. Uh, this is? Ooh, got one of Sid's sticks. That might just go on the wall. One of Malkin's sticks, which is sick. Another Malkin stick. This one's broken to hell. That's Rackle, Raquel, I don't know. The coolest part, in my opinion, we've got some game used pucks. These all have like the authentic NHL with the signature on the back. We're gonna get some of this stuff in, in the, into our table as well as, and I guarantee nobody else has this <laughs> in a piece of furniture, is some skate steel. So we've got a couple of Crosby's skate steels. And the reason I think they keep these is because every single person skates on a different grind. And so they keep them right in order to make the grinds more consistent. We've got a bunch of cool stuff here. We've got pucks, we've got skate blades. I think we're gonna try to use those in the table itself. So my thought is something like this. Maybe, I don't know, we just gotta lay them out. We just gotta get them in there. And then the uh, like uniformity. We could put one Crosby in. I think it's pretty cool. The Sid one's just so cool because it's just completely different shape, it's comical. Does anyone have access to a Zamboni? We should Zamboni this shelf. <laughs> We've hit the point where I think I need to scuff the resin that's on here so we get a good bond with the rest of the deep pour. And I'm terrified, but I know it's a necessary step when you're doing multiple layer pours. One of the reasons we hate doing multiple layer pours. So I've got 220 grit on here on a lower speed. I'm gonna hit this just with a scuff coat and then we're gonna wipe it down. We're gonna start gluing in the parts that we like where their orientation is and then mix up some deep pour, cover this thing and pray to Sidney Crosby. I mean, to be honest, it looks even more like ice. To adhere all this stuff, we're gonna use a little Total Boat five minute epoxy. I just need it to stick. You could use high performance or some of the other resin, but um, I'm trying to get this pour done today because it still has two more pours. <laughs> we'll mix this up and get it onto this stuff as inconspicuously as possible. Get some sandpaper and let's scuff these. Just grab the piece by your hand, Jordan. We, don't have, we have five minutes. Yum. So whatever these are hardened or coated with, you're not scratching it or getting anything through it. That's not even working. All right, so we're just gonna glue them down. So we're gonna send it. We'll start over here. You know what, let's lay them down first and then I'll pick them up and so that way I know where they're going. It's cool, like, it, you gotta just wonder how they get, like, getting these this stuff on there, it's just awesome. It's just freaking awesome. So we just need these things to, to stick down and then the deep pour will obviously keep them the way. Yeah, I think I like it like this. cool thing about stuff like this is it's just like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, my good peoples. So we are in the echoey pour room that will continue to improve. So bear with me on the audio here, but it's the only temperature controlled environment in our shop. And uh, we need the fathom to stay between 60 and 80 degrees for application. It snowed yesterday here in Pittsburgh. It's supposed to be 80 this weekend. So we're not gonna risk it being out in the regular shop. So with that being said, I'm gonna mix us some crystal clear resin. We have another pour planned for today, but you won't see that video for a minute. You should be subscribed if you do want to see it because there may be bullets involved. Let us mix. It's the time for a zipor, which is what we call full send. You ready? The next morning. The epoxy is now hard. Jordan went ahead and scuffed it off camera out in the other room because we have a bunch of stuff going on in here already and didn't want to get the dust in it. We're gonna fill up the little bit that's left here with Total Boat's high performance epoxy just to level it out. And then the whole thing's gonna get tabletop epoxy again, but because of the pouring thickness issues and things, we're gonna do it in two pours. Hopefully that doesn't ruin this. Jordan's mixing up epoxy. We'll get this thing poured. Tomorrow we'll pour the other part. And hopefully we'll have something to show you guys.
It's gonna be like a thousand degrees in this room when all this epoxy starts setting off. Yeah, that's probably about perfect there, Jay. We're doing another round of tabletop epoxy. This one, slightly thicker, and then I think we'll do one more round of it outside of the mold. We're just doing it inside the mold to help like keep it level, because there's some spots where it's really low compared to others. I'm just gonna dump some epoxy. top coat is on this sucker. And what we've learned about working with tabletop epoxy is that regardless of how much time and effort you put into prep, you're still gonna get imperfections. So I'm gonna take this out of the mold and start sanding and flattening it, and then hit it with another coat, uh, I think, depending how this one looks. But minus a couple issues, it's looking pretty damn cool. How's it look to Yins? How's it looking? Tell me, tell me right now! Every time I yell in the shop, Jordan thinks I'm talking to him. <laughs> yeah, that's how it's supposed to go. <laughs> I think it's pretty wild because this was like just caulking, no screws mold. I ain't light. That was a good pop. Watch Jordan just probably just like destroyed the bottom of the ice. Go, Jordan, go, go, go! Be a man! Throw it on the floor and yell at it. Yeah. Woo! So I think we've learned from our little plastic floor sheet experiment. We'll stick with incredibly expensive Tyvek. Sometimes you just gotta bust out your good old timber frame and slick. I have a surprise. It's a meat break. I made it. I got hungry. So I marinated pork tenderloins and whiskey and with hot sauce and a little rub and then I cooked it over an open flame. Get you some. You can cook it way faster than I wanted it to. We're getting ready for our hopefully final pour. A bunch of stuff on your face. Somehow, these two didn't end up in equal proportions. And I think for what is the sixth time on this project, we now pour. The table's dry and I'm having a couple concerns, some bubbles and stuff, but we're gonna square it up on the edges and then I'm gonna just dive into sanding and polishing, hoping to be able to resurrect it. There's a little bit more bubbles than I was hoping for, but sometimes you just gotta go and send it. So I wanna wet sand this thing and I've got this pretty cool vacuum test them from Festool. So we've got some wet sandpaper. This is 400. I don't really know how to do this, but my guess is you make it wet, then you sand it. Wet sanding. Oh. Oh, this thing's super high quality. Who bought this? So after going through a few sanding and polishing grits, um, I think I've come to the conclusion that this is way harder than they make it look on Instagram. God, internet. What's happening, in my opinion, is that I have too many different kinds of epoxy going on here. I think we still got some of the top coat. Then we got into the deep pour, and then we got back to the top coat. We're getting different sheens across it, and I'm also having a tough time of getting sanding marks out. So we're gonna resurface it again on the CNC, then I will go through the entire process again. But the goal is to try and get down through this top coat here, so everything is one uniform coat of whatever we've got left on this sucker. And then I will continue to try to be as good as the guys I saw on the internet. Spit it up! This actually looks kind of cool. We've got a black interior on the live edge from where I lit it on fire, and then we've eliminated all the rest of that because it looked like crap, and I don't know whose idea that was anyway, but they're an idiot. We need to light these on fire. Yes. So let's get this thing sanded up. This is much more slightly above average. It was very much below average before, but now that we're slightly back above average, I'm a little happier. So I just buff this SOB through number one and it is looking so much better. I'm so glad we went through that flattening process. I'm gonna hit it with coat two on the buff. Woo! So the thing is looking sweet. And when you hold it up, I mean, that looks sweet, doesn't it? Viewers at home, comment down below. So my thought here is we've got a bunch of broken sticks, okay? Gino, number 71. Never heard of him. Have you heard of him? Because he's pretty decent. This is a happy accident if I've ever had one. Trust me, I've had a few. Perfect thickness to sit right underneath the chamfer that I've put on this table. So I think I might make a frame of some sort out of lay sticks. That'd be the French sticks. 
But first, we gotta get some finish on this wood. I'm gonna go with some Rubio on this sucker because I wanna get a nice, rich, golden tone on the wood. That tends to be what Rubio does. And it'll dry super fast so I can stare at this quicker. I also am not gonna go over the parts I just buffed. It's coming to life. Does it look Titties Magoo? I think I'm liking the contrast because it looks burned and not burned. It kind of accentuates the center line. That could be me telling you it's artistic because I fucked up my right as an artiste. I was told once. We're going to start out with this Geno stick. I've got it kind of laid out and I'm just going to cut it straight on the chop saw. Follow me. Now that we have a thickness for that, we've got Brian Rust. So like that's kind of the vision. Kind of wanted to do Jari over here. Saw this like down. It's got a foam in it. Ah, not the stupidest. Kind of neat. Oh, got a big cramp on the left side. So we're going to adhere these with epoxy. And I think the most intelligent way to go about it is to get a, like a rough face on that side. And then we'll clamp them all in. Not get any squeeze out, I hope. And now we goo. That should be plenty. All right, so we're gonna get gook on both of these. So you're saying do this. I guess you can slide her in for the W. Whee! Ooh! And after further consideration, we've decided that this reads better as a piece of wall art. All the lettering on the blades, all the lettering on the pucks and the logo, everything just reads better from this direction. To make a tabletop out of it, it'd be really goofy, in my opinion. Even though we love goofy around here, I think wall art's the way to go. So like I said at the beginning of the video, if you wanna enter to win this, all you gotta do is subscribe to the channel and comment down below, let's go pens. I'll ship it to anywhere in the lower 48 and Canadia. If you want to see me doing more weird stuff and building crazy things out of epoxy, I got a whole playlist for you right here.